You know, of all the criticism I can throw at Shrek the Musical, the biggest one is that they didn't include All Star. That is the Shrek song. How could you? I am pretty mixed on Shrek the Musical on a good day. It's not a musical I'm overly enthralled by. I think it has some strong moments. I think it sticks pretty closely to the film. And because of this, you know, it's naturally going to be pretty decent. But I just, I've, I've never really been sold on Shrek's musicality. The whole plot of Shrek is that it's the anti-fairy tale. So the musical version of it should probably be an anti-musical. It's not. <laughs> I don't think we should have expected anything else, but it's not. But this current UK tour of Shrek the Musical is... <sighs> so, what did I think of Shrek the Musical on tour? What are its problems? What does it do right? Let's find out. But, if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I am a chaotic little theatre reviewer and content creator here on YouTube. I do video essays, reviews, and I, I, everything. I do things. And if any of those things are interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me out. It helps out the channel. But, let's discuss Shrek. Then I saw her face. Dum, bum, bum, bum. Now I'm a believer. If you've seen Shrek the film, you know the plot to Shrek the Musical. Shrek the Musical follows Shrek. He's an ogre. That's him. He's having a great old life, but oh no! Look at all these people, all these fairy tale creatures. They've been pushed onto the swamp by Lord Farquaad, and Shrek ain't having any of that. Shrek ain't having that. Shrek is like, no, thank you, ma'am. I'm gonna go to Mr. Farquaad himself, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my swamp back. And to get the swamp back, he has to save Princess Fiona from the tower, with his only help being an annoying donkey. Uh, <laughs> can he do it? We'll find out! <laughs> you know what, from now on, I am describing musical plots like that in these videos. That <laughs> I'm doing that from now on. The film and the show have a couple of key differences. There's a little bit more backstory that they put onto Shrek, mainly so that they can parallel Shrek and Fiona a bit more. There's some other things, there's some details, and this production has even made some further changes from the original musical. However, a lot of these changes don't work because they haven't actually changed much of the script. Road trip musicals, for me at least, tend to struggle a bit, especially if you don't have the capability to change the setting or have a big enough stage to have all of these different sets and really immerse you into these locations. It can be quite a struggle and a lot of these productions will just tend to lean on projection. And that is what this version of Shirtley Musical does. If you've seen the Broadway Pro Shot, if you've seen that, you know all the glamorous sets that this musical can have. This version does not, but... <laughs> It's similar to what I talked about with Rebecca. If you've got a musical that is just fine, but your production is like really well handled and all the staging is amazing, you're gonna make it look better. But without that, you're going to show a couple of the cracks in the material. So let's start by talking about the material itself. Shrek the Musical is a perfectly fine musical. Its score is mixed, there's some really great songs, there's there's a song at the end of Act 1 that is legitimately a fantastic musical theatre number that I would listen to on any day of the week. On the whole, Shrek the Musical is like a nice time. It's a musical that is perfectly serviceable. Is it going to wow you completely? Absolutely not. Is it going to shut your kid up for five minutes? Probably, but I think there is a little essence of Shrek that is lost as it's translated to stage. As I said before, Shrek as a film is an anti-fairy tale. It's taking all of these aspects of a fairy tale story and flipping them on their heads, basically because it was designed as a massive screw you to Disney. Shrek works as a film because it's kind of flipping the book on all of this. It's taking these conventions of a typical Disney film and is playing with them. I don't think Shrek the Musical takes the opportunity to do this with musical theatre, which is why I think this as an adaptation is a little bit less successful. 
it's fine, it's serviceable, but it misses a really cool opportunity. But look, I'm trying to put loads of creativity and a really fun twist on Shrek the Musical. I, I don't know what I really should be expecting. <laughs> Imagine this musical if Shrek didn't sing. Imagine if everyone else is following these typical rules of musical theatre, but Shrek is kind of trying to push them away and ignore them until the end of Act 1. Honestly, it wouldn't even be that hard because Shrek doesn't sing that much. Cut his bit out of Travel Song and cut his opening number and you'd be perfectly fine. It's meant to be fairy tale like so you can have Big Bright Beautiful World done by some kind of narrator or something. And then you get this song towards the end of Act 1 when Shrek is finally trying to open himself up and it would really reflect the character growth of Shrek within the world of musical theatre. I don't know, maybe I'm just reading nitpicky. Maybe this is a terrible idea. Maybe, maybe I'm looking too much into Shrek the Musical. But I don't know. I feel like the end of Act 1 song is so impactful that it really should be the first time he sings. Let's move on to talk more specifically about this production. Namely, a lot of the changes that they make. This production has made what I think is a quite respectable move to get rid of the typical way that they do Lord Farquaad. Farquaad has typically been done by an average sized actor on their knees with fake legs. And the musical is constantly berating Farquaad for his size, just similarly as the film did. The problem is when you have an average sized actor in this role, it seems like you're punching down on people with dwarfism. So this version has pretty much cut all of the short jokes and has gotten rid of that side of Farquaad. I think anything that is done with the intention of trying to make things more inclusive is a good thing. Although it does confuse me why they've cut all of the short jokes but have left in every single fat joke in this musical. This change really does highlight how much of Farquaad just relied on these short jokes. Because when they take it all away and when there's none of that left, Farquaad has absolutely nothing. Farquaad absolutely has nothing. Which is such a shame because he does have such a strong impact as a villain in other versions, especially the film. What's more, the musical has actually already rewritten parts of Farquaad so that he was actually the son of a dwarf. And this still exists in the musical, despite the fact that he's not short. They still pull out a dwarf at the end. So even though they've taken away all of the short jokes from Farquaad, they still end up doing the short stuff with Farquaad. I don't know what they could have done to fix this though. It, without having to completely rewrite or take more influence from the film version. It does end up feeling like Farquaad is quite weak. There's also so many weird little details that, I don't know, they bug me a bit. Such as Pinocchio's nose. They also don't include the bit where his nose grows. And then they turn around and they still have the song line where he says, Outed by my nose. No, you weren't. Your nose didn't grow. I've worked on youth productions where they still managed to have Pinocchio's nose grow. Like, if, 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 if youth productions can do this, surely the UK tour can find a way to have Pinocchio's nose grow. I don't think I'm asking for much here. I think another thing that really does let this production down is the set. Look, it's hard to tour a big set but I feel like this strips it back so much that it's like, it's such a shame. Shrek is filled with all of these really wonderful locations. The swamp is iconic, Dulog, you've got the Dragon's Keep, and almost all of these are all projection. What's more, when I saw the show, for three quarters of it, the projection was blurry. They fixed it at the start of act two, and then by like the midpoint, it was blurry again. The projections are fine in quality when they're not blurry, but a lot of these really cool scenes do lose a lot of their impact when we're just looking at a screen. I think when they're blending the projection with the more usual set pieces, it does work, but for sections like the Dragon's Keep when they're first crossing the bridge, there is absolutely no bridge. We're just looking at a flame-filled background 
and it kind of feels a bit lame. Especially when you've got a story that is so full of creativity and so full of wonderful fairy tale references like Shrek. It just comes off as a little bit cheap. Which is such a shame when you know that they toured the original West End version of this show. If we can tour that, then why are we settling for projections like this? There's other little details of set I want to talk about, namely the dragon. Look, okay. The dragon costume. Beautiful. I love it. It looks stunning. It's lovely. It's like a nice little take. It looks really dragony. It's cute. I like it. It's sparkly. It's giving a little bit if, if the dragon was a queen in sex, you know? <laughs> but then they also have this really flimsy dragon puppet that they bring out that kind of like half lip syncs the song. And I just, why do we need it? I, I don't think we need it. There's not enough smoke on the stage to hide all of the cast members puppeteering it in morph suits. Other productions have had such an impact with a giant dragon puppet. It's clear they wanted the dragon to move around on the stage, but when you've got the actress on stage as well, you don't really need it to. It would have been fine to keep this dragon puppet at the back, fill the back with a lot of smoke, so that you're hiding all of these actors in morph suits, so it has a bit more effect. And just, you know, if you're gonna have the puppet lip sync, at least have it lip sync the whole song and not just randomly open its mouth every now and then. And the other thing is that Donkey never looks at the puppet. They never look at the puppet at all. They're always looking at the actress. So why do you need the puppet? <laughs> If it's not going to lip sync, if it's not going to be looked at, if it looks kind of cheap with it basically being a backpack on an actor's back, why do we need it? There is another moment where these morph suits come out and it... I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to describe the exact morph suit they wear so you kind of realise what I'm saying. They are in a full morph suit, a black morph suit with the face cut out. The problem is, normally when these are used, the stage is dark, so you can't really see the actors. But you can just fully see them now in this production. And they use it for a joke in Act 2 that kind of works, it did get a chuckle out of me. Doesn't stop it from looking that cheap though. And it's not like there's no work around here, there are really easy ways that you could hide these actors, but this production just doesn't really seem like it wants to. All right, I've natted on about my problems with the set. Let's talk about costumes. They're fine. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. Except Donkey being in trainers. Why is Donkey in trainers? It, it's so jarring to see this like massive donkey suit and then just trainers at the bottom. The rest of the costumes, they're pretty faithful to the films. I think when you're dealing with a film like Shrek where the, where the actual like characters are so iconic, you kind of have to stick very closely to it. And they do, for the most part. Except donkey's trainers, please, please, change the shoes. <laughs> at least make them look like, the, the, what are donkey feet called? Hooves? Hooves sounds right. Hooves? Yeah. Let's talk about the music of the show. As I said, I'm a bit mixed on it. I think half the score is really good, and I think half the score is pretty forgettable. Let's start with what I liked. Okay, Forever, the song for Dragon. This is a new song. This wasn't in the Broadway version, and I'm pretty sure they changed it when it went to the US tour. It was in the West End version at some point. I don't know if it was in it when it first came over, but it did eventually make its way into the West End version. And this song is a bop. The old version, Dragon Pot Pie, was atrocious. It, it was not a good song. So honestly, thank God they replaced it, because this is brilliant. It's fun, it's boppy, it's a great number for Dragon, who only gets this one number to shine. And honestly, finally, Dragon can with this number. Who I Be is a song for Shrek that ends at one. As I said, I think it would be more impactful if Shrek didn't sing until this point. But this song is really beautiful. It's a nice summation of Shrek's character. It's a nice way to show his journey. It's just a legitimately good musical theatre song that takes you on a really lovely journey. It is a really nice way to end that one. Morning Person, I quite like it. It's cute. I think it 
goes on for a little bit long, but I think it provides Joanne Clifton some great moments of comedy. But then there's the more forgettable elements of the score, like Story of My Life, and this is how a dream comes true. It's a very mixed score. I think a lot of the music is great, but I think lyrically it can leave a bit to be desired. <laughs> but then again, it is Shrek the Musical. If you were expecting, I don't know, Hamilton, I think you're a bit delusional. <laughs> I think for the most part the songs are fun. You know, Make a Move and uh, What's Up Duloc, they have their moments. But I wouldn't catch myself listening to any of this music outside of the show. But, despite this, it actually does pass my one song test. I always say, there should be one song that completely summates this musical as a whole. It's the entire reason for you making the musical and why you're pushing forward. This song is the song. And it's who I'd be. Shrek the Musical has the one song, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but I gotta give it credit where credit is due. It has the one song. <laughs> Just a shame that the rest of the score doesn't live up to that one song, but that's okay. Let's talk about this cast. I will say as a general thing, there are some weird characterization choices through this version. I don't know if they're trying to distance themselves from the original or try and do something different, but I think a lot of these don't work as well. Anthony Lawrence's Shrek, I think his highs are through his vocal performance. I think how he carries songs like Build Me A Wall or Who I'd Be are really, really strong. I just wish there was a little bit more of the character journey through the show. I wish he was a little bit harsher with some of the delivery, uh, especially towards Donkey. Joanne Clifton, I didn't mind her performance. I think she did a good job, especially in the more comedic moments. I think there's a lot of moments where Clifton kind of shows the twist with Fiona a little bit too early. Because the whole thing with Fiona is that she's meant to be this perfect princess at the start, and then slowly as you go, she starts to unravel more of these things that are a twist on the typical formula. Bradley Sears gives energy as Donkey, and you know what? I kind of liked it. <laughs> He's bouncy, he's spry, he's really charming on stage. James Gillen as Farquaad, as I said before, this is a tough one because a lot of what made Farquaad, I don't want to say work, but a lot of what made up Farquaad's character is cut here and you're left with very bare bones. I think, honestly, he needed to ham it up even more. If you're being left with absolutely nothing, you need to be campus tits. And come on, this is James Gillen. He he was a drag queen and everybody's talking about Jamie. I know this man can give camp. <laughs> he has some fun interjections here and there and these can be quite creative, but he delivers every line as Farquaad like he just doesn't care. I guess I can see what you're trying to do there. He's kind of like this over the top ruler who probably doesn't care about anything that's happening around him. But I don't know, I feel like with a little bit more enthusiasm, he could be a really fun and likeable villain. Shrek the Musical, especially this version of the UK tour, is a bit of a letdown, I'll be perfectly honest. I think it has potential to be a fun night out. I think some of the material in Shrek is good enough, and obviously the story is good enough, that it can carry itself a bit. And it's definitely a lower three-star show but I'm not sure how much I would personally recommend this production. But what do you think? Have you seen a version of Shrek the Musical? Have you seen this version of Shrek the Musical? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me, it helps out the channel. Here's some links to some other videos on the now and a link to my Instagram if you want to drop me a photo over there. But that's it for me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.